If this is a SpaceX clone, Elon must be very happy about China's space program. If you're feeling a sense of deja vu when you look at this design, you're not wrong. The similarity is truly remarkable. It exhibits a striking resemblance to SpaceX's Starship, currently the world's largest rocket. In all fairness, China appears to have copied SpaceX's Starship. So what might Elon's reaction be to this? Let's find out more in today's episode of NR Studio. When China began seriously considering sending astronauts to the moon in the mid-2010s, its senior rocket scientists began planning the development of a large booster rocket to carry out the mission. At the time, China's heavy lift rocket looked a bit like the large heavy lift rockets NASA was designing for its space launch system. It was fully expendable with three stages and a side-mounted solid booster. However, SpaceX was beginning to achieve important milestones in reusability with a kerosene-powered first stage and was moving into the development of a fully reusable Starship. China is reevaluating its heavy lift rocket plans. In presentations over the past few years, Chinese officials have repeatedly discussed integrating reusable components into the Long March 9 design. After all, China has now refined the rocket's design to include a reusable first stage. Now, according to information released at a major aviation exhibition in Zhuhai, China, the design has undergone another change. This time, the Long March 9 looks nearly identical to Starship. According to the latest specifications, the Long March 9 will be equipped with a fully reusable first stage, powered by 30 YF215 engines. These are full-flow combustion engines that burn methane and liquid oxygen, each producing about 200 tons of thrust. By comparison, Starship's first stage is powered by 33 Raptors, which also burn methane and liquid oxygen, each producing about 280 tons of thrust. The new specifications also outline a fully reusable rocket configuration with an upper stage that is very similar to Starship's second stage, with wings in the same position. According to the Airshow presentation, China aims to fly the vehicle for the first time in 2033, nearly a decade from now. In response, Elon, the creator of Starship, commented with a nonchalant attitude. Interesting. I think China is smart to target a fully reusable rocket. Other countries need to do the same. This is a fundamental breakthrough that is needed to make life multiplanetary. Elon has historically been very open and has encouraged other rocket companies to follow SpaceX's lead in promoting collective progress. Unlike some competitors such as Blue Origin, who are often concerned that others might steal their techniques, which are arguably not particularly innovative. To be fair, this is not the first time that China's rocket program has been inspired by SpaceX. The pattern became clear when Space Pioneer announced plans to develop its own version of the Falcon 9, which was just one example in a broader trend of technological adaptation. Both China's state-run space agency and private Chinese spaceflight companies appear to be closely following SpaceX's strategy. From design philosophy to operational practices, its influence is evident in every aspect of their space programs. This systematic approach suggests a coordinated effort to accelerate development. The similarities extend across technical domains. Chinese companies are developing reusable rocket technology, improving vertical landing capabilities, and designing cargo and crew capsules that bear striking similarities to SpaceX's models. Even their manufacturing processes and testing protocols show some striking similarities. The most recent example from last week was when semi-private Chinese spaceflight company Cosmo Lab announced plans to develop a fully reusable rocket called the Leap within the next few years. In an announcement accompanied by a video, the company said it would adopt a new tower and chopper landing method, first demonstrated by SpaceX with its Starship system last month. In addition, several other Chinese companies are also conducting groundbreaking experiments to prepare for launches where they can land their rocket boosters like SpaceX. Overall, China's space industry has adopted a pragmatic strategy, carefully studying SpaceX's successes and failures, then applying proven solutions. Rather than starting from scratch, they are leveraging existing knowledge to accelerate their progress in the space sector. This fast follower approach is not unique to the space sector. It is common practice in emerging industries where one company has established a clear technological lead. Nevertheless, the magnitude and methodical character of China's strategy in the aerospace sector render this situation especially remarkable.
This strategy raises important questions about the future of space exploration and innovation. While it may accelerate short-term progress, the long-term implications for technological progress and internal space cooperation remain to be seen. The question of whether China's approach will drive real innovation or leave the space industry permanently lagging behind the U.S. is complex, especially given the recent setbacks experienced by China's private space companies. Despite the rapid adoption of SpaceX's pioneering technology, many of these companies have struggled to replicate it effectively. Several test failures illustrate the significant challenges in achieving the sustainability and reliability that are at the heart of SpaceX's principles. For example, in June, the Chinese space pioneer conducted a static burn test of the first stage of its Changlang 3 rocket. Typically, static fire tests keep the rocket tethered to the pad, but the Changlang 3 unexpectedly lifted off, lost control, and then crashed. The incident demonstrated the lack of proper control mechanisms and illustrated the risks involved in clumsy replication efforts by Chinese companies. Deep Blue Aerospace's Nebula 1 rocket, though impressive, crashed during a landing test, highlighting the challenges in perfecting landing procedures. These failures have raised safety concerns, especially since some Chinese rockets have landed far from the intended recovery zone, potentially endangering local wildlife and ecosystems. By current projections from industry experts, it could take until 2030 for China to match SpaceX's current pace. By then, SpaceX could be operating a Starship, the world's largest rocket, for missions to Mars, while China's space sector is still trying to catch up. But a change of fortunes is not out of the question, as the U.S. and China are engaged in a new space race with different motivations than the old one. This time, the goal is not simply to reach the moon, but to establish a sustainable, long-term presence there. Both countries recognize the importance of reusability as a key to success. China is demonstrating its flexibility and strategy by developing two parallel rocket lines. The Long March 10s are designed for short-term missions, while the reusable Long March 9s are intended for more complex, long-term operations. This approach shows that China is balancing immediate needs with a long-term vision. In the U.S., the situation is a bit more complex, with two major programs running side by side. SpaceX, through its Starship initiative, is making strides towards achieving complete reusability, while NASA persists in financing the expensive SLS program. This separation could affect America's competitiveness. The moon's South Polaris is taking center stage in this race for a reason. The craters in this region are thought to contain ice, a valuable resource for sustaining life and producing rocket fuel. Moreover, the usable area in this region is notably constrained, rendering it essential to secure advantageous positions. The success factor in this race is not speed, but sustainability. The country that develops an efficient reusable space transportation system will gain a significant advantage, which requires not only advanced technology, but also a complex logistics ecosystem. The private sector is increasingly important. SpaceX has shown that private companies can innovate and develop space technology more efficiently than governments. China is also encouraging the development of private space companies, though they remain under tight state control. However, the Chinese government is pushing aggressively to advance its space ambitions and take a dominant role in the field. A sharp increase in space spending is a clear sign of its ambition, with spending rising to $19.5 billion this year, though it still lags far behind the U.S., which spent about $100 billion last year. China's investment has paid off, not just in its state-led programs, but also in its commercial sector driving advances in technologies such as design, propulsion systems, and robotics. International cooperation will play a key role in shaping the future of this race. In the past eight years, China has signed at least 46 agreements with 19 countries to foster global space collaboration. In 2016, it signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the United Nations Office on Outer Space Affairs to open the Tiananmen Yang Space Station to all UN member states. In April, the UN chief praised China's cooperative efforts in the space station project. China has worked closely with Russia on key issues, but its space power has been weakened. The International Lunar Research System is a joint initiative between China and Russia to establish a base at the moon's south pole. 
The plan is for the ILRS to be fully operational by 2050, conducting lunar research with a lunar launch pad, supporting rudimentary interplanetary missions. Ten countries have signed commitments to support the ILRS. The growing partnership around the ILRS is seen as a competitor to the U.S.-led Artemis Accords. In effect, the non-binding agreement reinforces provisions in the 1967 Outer Space Treaty that are based on the U.S. interpretation of the exploitation of resources permitted by the treaty. 39 countries have signed the accords. However, some of these countries, such as France, Germany, India, and Japan, have also joined China in projects related to the final module of the Tianhe Space Station. However, after all that, whether China can surpass the U.S. remains to be seen. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next episode.